Hey everybody, what's going on? This is Dr. Joey Kramer and I am coming to you with another exciting episode of the Upper Cervical Corner. And today is going to be a little bit different because we are be going through a case study. And I like to think of case studies as being a one of one of a patient in our practice who has reported success with their care, with the intervention, with what we have provided with upper cervical transformative care for this patient. And so many of you ask questions about upper cervical, right? You're like, uh, hey, what is the premise? What do you do? And in it, what we are looking at is how do we evaluate, one, the neurological structure, and two, how do we evaluate the underlying physical structure of an x-ray, right? And so in this, what I have for you is a pre and post x-ray image of a patient who is currently going through care in our practice. There are going to be several lines on this page that we are going to talk through. And I don't really need you to be an expert, but I do need you to understand normal from abnormal and what we are trying to achieve when someone comes into our practice and presents with us a symptom, right? They may come in, they may say, hey doc, I'm dealing with vertigo, or I have Meniere's, or I'm trying to navigate hormonal regulation, or in this specific case, this patient is currently trying to navigate TMJ deficiencies correlated to a blood pressure regulation problem. And in her case, she is incredibly interested in getting off of her blood pressure medication, in which really I, as a upper cervical doctor, cannot recommend. I want to be very clear about that. That is not my goal, nor is that my um, recommendation as a clinician. I cannot do that legally with my license. However, we can partner with someone who is suffering from a problem, and we can create for them this opportunity to work together with a primary care physician to detox their medication and get off of it if their primary care physician is of that mindset. And how is that done? Well, in every single case that comes into here, and if you have this conversation with me, you will know that I tell you that my job is to find out, number one, do you have a nervous system problem? And number two, if you have a nervous system problem, how do we root cause fix the underlying structure to improve neurological performance? And so without further ado, what we look at and what we try to evaluate here is cervical structure. And so what we're going to do is we have a film over here on the right. This is the original film of the patient. And over here on the left is the other uh, updated film of the patient. And what you'll see here is that this film series was taken on June 10th, right? And this one is taken on August 26th. So roughly about two months, two and a half months of time in our practice. Um, this specific patient was gone for a trip for two and a half weeks of the summer. So we have to take into consideration this is really about six weeks of upper cervical care that um, this specific patient has been under. And what we're going to do is we're going to start with this film on the right hand side. I'm going to talk through a few things. One of the favorite things of a medical doctor to do to me is to tell me that I am faking a cervical curve on a neck. And in my practice, I do not do that. And that is what our top line is for. Our top line is running along the uh, hard palate of the spine. And if your hard palate is level with the floor, which you will see on both of these images, it is assumed that this cervical structure would be considered their normal, right? So when a patient sits up in the, in the chair, I'm not having them extend their jaw nor flex their jaw, right? Their chin, and this film is not tucked down, nor is their head leaned back to force this faking of a curve. So we go off of data, real data, real measurements, real evaluations. Now in the past, you've heard me talk to you about this top number. And this top number, I always tell patients that normal is 18 to 22 degrees, right? Well, in this specific case, this patient is a 20.5 atlas plane line. What that means is that if I take this this bottom line right here that my mouse is scrolling across, and I bisect your atlas, which goes right through here, through the anterior tubercle, and I measure that angle to the horizon, we should be 18 to 22 degrees. This says, for all intents and purposes, that she's normal. 
fair. But we have to have a secondary check, which is this next angle, which is called your Cobb angle. And a Cobb angle measures your C2 to your C7 relative to one another. This is called a secondary cervical curve because it develops with gravity and you also lose it with presentation of trauma, presentation of toxic exposure, or presentation of abnormal autonomic nervous system function. In her spe specific case, she has a negative 4.5 degree angle. What this means is that her neurological state is not optimal Hence, in her specific case, she is suffering with high blood pressure. And so what we know is that if we take care of your C1, which is right here, which is a regulator for autonomic function, that you will create what optimal should look like. On her six week update, if we look at this, we bisect the atlas, we run our line, we make sure that our chin is level with the ground or our heart palate is level. Yes, we have gone up out of what would be considered the optimal range to a 25.4. However, in this specific case, if we look at her, lo her lower angle or her cervical curve of C2 to C7, she is now at a 19.7 positive degree change, right? That is a huge transformation for this specific patient. And what you are seeing in this is a restoration of normal autonomic integrity, meaning that when this patient did her progress evaluation with us, she noted that her blood pressure has been incredibly stable the last four weeks. Even though she's been out of town, she's gotten exposed to a couple of viruses, she's had a couple of challenges that are related to her health. And so in this, what you are looking at is a manifestation of a resolution of root cause addressing care. And see, what we pride ourselves on at HOPE is the ability to show our patients, not just tell them that they are getting better. So in her case, her curve is approaching what could be considered optimal for her neurological function. Now, I will update films again with her in another six weeks. And my intention is to see the C1 angle probably drop down back into the 22 range while this curve maintains itself. This should increase to about a 25 to a 27 and overall stabilize in her neck. How this was done was by looking at a front to back view of this specific patient. And when we look at a front to back view, we want to assess the distribution of the cervical curve, right, with you, as you look at this, right on this right-hand side, what you'll notice is that from her roughly T1 all the way up to her C2, she has this like bend in her neck. She has a low right shoulder compared to her left, right? And if we take the two numbers, her C1 is translated to the left by roughly, what is that, 1.5 millimeters is what we're looking at on this standpoint. A normal C1 tolerance is going to be less than 0.3 when we subtract the difference. So if we go over to the next film, what you will notice is that both of her shoulders are now basically level. She no longer has an elevated left or a lowered right. You will notice that the curve is subtly coming out of her neck and that her measurements are approaching this 0.3 tolerance that we are looking for. So what I simply did was take this patient from a journey of having an abnormal cervical curve, an abnormal neurological function, and a representation of abnormal symptoms being TMJ problems and blood pressure regulation, and restoring normal cervical biomechanics by adjusting her C1 vertebrae into a normal, um, normal what position with her skull and her C2. As we approach this normal, it will restore her neurophysiology, which will restore her autonomic integration, which will deliver for her the desired results of a regulated blood pressure, better quality of life, probably less like, like stress and overall resilience in her ability to thrive as a human being. So what this does for you, the listener, who is skeptical of upper cervical care, is solidify for you that when we do our job, the results are permanent and they are something that you can visualize on an x-ray. This isn't a handy dandy, let me feel you. Oh yeah, I definitely got that. You felt it, great, what a crack, ha! Right, inside this office, our goal is calculated adjustments designed to restore normal structure, 
normal physiological function and to give to you the quality of life that you ask us for. This is another episode of the Upper Cervical Corner, a case study on the results that we deliver.